the world's two largest economies are in a trade war that has seen tit-for-tat tariffs on billions of dollars of imports. But to U.S. President Donald Trump, it's just a little squabble and trade talks with China have not collapsed. Amidst the tension, U.S. entrepreneurs have begun counting their losses uh, following the 15% tariff increase on $200 billion worth of Chinese goods. There's more in this report. Some U.S. entrepreneurs and economists are worried about the escalation of China-U.S. trade friction and believe that imposing more tariffs would have a negative impact on the U.S. economy. Tom Lee, founder of Cleveland Whiskey, said the tariffs have cut profits and held him back from expanding his business. I think we're impacted by 15 to 20 percent of our revenue has been cut off because of these tariffs. Well, it certainly limits the amount of investment we can afford to do in any given year. I mean, it's, it's not just uh, equipment that we plan to put in. We had hoped to move into a new building uh, this year. That's probably going to be delayed a little bit. Uh, certainly new hires. We probably would have four more people. We're a small company. We're only 15 people, but we'd probably be at about 19 or 20 right now if it weren't for the tariffs. Right now, we're struggling with whether we can pass some costs on to our consumers, and I don't think we can. I think our margins are going to shrink. Uh, that reduces our profitability. It's going to make it a little harder for us to raise money for future funding rounds. Um, you know, and I think we have yet to see the full implications of what the tariffs will be. In addition, many economists point out that U.S. actions like threatening trade partners by imposing more tariffs violates economic rules and the free trade principle. Tariffs and trade wars are so bad for the U.S. economy. The U.S. is a rich country precisely because it has such low tariffs. It takes in lots of the world's plenty, and it's basically its trade with the rest of the world allows its people to specialize. So bad for the economy, and, and so there's naturally going to be cracks within the Republican Party that has historically been focused on economic growth. The director, Center for Economic Freedom Works, John Tammy believes the U.S. is a rich country precisely because of low tariffs. Data from Oxford Economics show that Trump's tariffs increase and the escalation of trade friction will cause the U.S. GDP to drop by 0.3% annually, with each family suffering a loss of over 700 U.S. dollars and a reduction in jobs numbering about 900,000. The International Monetary Fund and the World Bank listed trade friction as the largest uncertainty that affects global economic growth, calling on all countries to follow multilateralism and maintain the current international trading system. No country first. Professor Jeffrey Sachs of the Columbia University has also condemned the new tariff regime in unequivocal terms. This is a kind of bullying. Uh, Trump is a bully, uh, not only to China, but even to Canada, to Germany, to the European Union. That is the kind of approach that he believes in. If you negotiate with someone else, first threaten them or take action to hurt them. Then he thinks they'll be weaker and make a compromise. But we know with China and with others, it doesn't work that way. Uh, other countries will not negotiate under that kind of threat and should not negotiate. No country should negotiate under that kind of threat. Prior to the tariff regime, President Trump had criticized China repeatedly for intellectual property theft and believes he has to change the global trading system because it is a ripoff for the U.S. Well, joining me to discuss this is a policy analyst, Kalechi Decker, right here in the studio with me. Good to have you yeah, on the news. Pleasure. And... Uh, Adidiron, Dr. Bola Adidiron is uh, an international relations expert also joining us via uh, Skype there. Uh, let me begin uh, with you uh, right here in the studio, uh, Kelechi Deka. Now, uh, Donald Trump uh, just only in the last few hours said, look, this is just a little uh, squabble. squabble and trade talks with China have not collapsed. Is he minimizing the impact, not just for the US and China, but the global you know, far-reaching impact this could have. Yeah, um, trade, um, trade war anywhere, no matter how small that country is, affects the global economy um, in a very um, negative way. Um, Trump just came out because he, when he noticed that 
um, the stock markets all over the world were reacting negatively to what he did and they were just crashing left, right and center. He just came out trying to dampen the, um, you know, to minimize the damage, but it's already done because China um, kind of uh, retaliated by also um, slamming American exports with uh, their own tariffs. Now, before I bring in Dr. Bola, on the issue of uh, the, the global stocks, they, they seem to have rebound, uh, rebounded. Yeah. What does that indicate in itself? Yeah, oh, yeah because it, they didn't know the extent China was going to retaliate. But China um, just left out some, and because you know, they were just playing li the leverage game. So they just you know, did only 60 billion and left others out. So that was why they, you saw the rebound. Okay, let me bring in Dr. Bola right here. I mean, you, you are an uh, international relations uh, expert. Let's even look at the, the, diplomatic, uh, the diplomatic impact this uh, trade war could have. And a lot of people who uh, have actually said Donald Trump doesn't seem to be learning from history, that trade wars usually lead to diplomatic and even all out uh, wars. What do you think are the likely implications as far as diplomatic uh, consequences are for the US and China and maybe other countries like Europe? Uh, thank you for um, having me. Uh, you are very correct that there is um, a lot of history behind that kind of statement to say that uh, um, trade wars always precipitate, um, come before uh, international, full out international conflicts. We can, there were several instances right before the Second World War where uh, trade wars you know, actually contributed to, to, to the emergence of the Second World War in some sense. Um, so this is not good for uh, international world peace, uh, our, our quest to, uh, to ensure that uh, the international system is peaceful. But um, I also do not want to sound very hyperbolic and, and go to the extent and say that, well, this current trade war would lead to a, a third world war, as some people have, uh, um, as some people have suggested. I think it's far, it's a far reach. I don't think that there's a possibility of that. Um, I think that there is also a realization that um, uh, the, that any the continuance of this trade war would not only hurt American economy, but that uh, escalating this beyond uh, what is necessary uh, could could have devastating effects not only for both both countries but for for global economy and peace too. So I think both countries would be uh, would be sensible to 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 apply the bricks at at the critical junctions. All right, let, uh, let me come back to the studio right here with you. Uh, economists say Trump's actions actually are like threatening trade wars and all of that. Um, they, they violate economic rules and the principles of uh, free trade. W what do you have to say to that? And if bearing this in mind, um, how then really should he go about, um, you know, ensuring that his policy of America first does not hurt both America, China and anybody else? Um, Trump does not care about any other person except his own policy of America first. That's what he's been pursuing. And first, when he came to power, he, he, he fired the first salvo at the World Trade Organization. And if you, if you, if you, if you observe uh, you know, from his body language, he didn't want to have anything to do with the WTO. And because of this, what's happening now, people saw it that why he didn't want to come under the WTO was because he's going to start a lot of and trade wars, a lot of trade battles, you know, hitting out countries and, and you know, uh, all over the place. So, yeah, and also, there is no free trade anyway. It's only the poor countries that adhere to the rules of free trade. The rich countries just smash everybody and just move out. They don't care about free trade. There's no free trade anywhere in the world. And America does not believe in free trade. And this is a sign of, you know, growing protectionism all over the world. If you notice all the big countries, big economies, are trying to protect their economies now, you know, through protectionism, and also, which is an offshot of nationalism, political arm of nationalism. So it's just uh, all right, uh, Dr. Bola. Let me come to you. Well, uh, markets seem to be calm as hopes rise for China talks. What does this indicate? Is the worst over now? No, I don't think so. I think that the new uh, uh, China is certainly preparing for uh, for the long haul. Uh, um, there are 
the, the, the Chinese president a couple of days ago uh, um, was talking nation, uh, nationalist sentiment and saying, uh, by saying that uh, whatever actions that the, the U.S. does uh, cannot, cannot, could, would not affect its economy significantly. Uh, it considers Chinese economy as a C. In fact, he used, he used a, a sort of an, an analogy saying that uh, uh, rain can only affect uh, a small pond, but the Chinese economy is a C, and rain cannot really make an, a major impact on, 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 um, on, on the sea. So in a sense, there, there is a sense in which um, the, the, the Chinese people, the Chinese government are ready for, the, for a long battle. Um, and there is a there is there is some sense in which we we can we can we can expect that this this trade war would last uh, longer than we we expected. I mean, we thought that there was a deal that was going to be reached last week or a couple of weeks ago, but that obviously uh, collapsed spectacularly. Um, but 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 I think that there is there is uh, we shouldn't be too okay. Optimistic about, uh, let me let me quickly uh, stay with you before we round this off. Um, Yes, yeah, so of course, China has said it's ready even to go into a full-blown trade war with uh, the, the United States. But re who really is the biggest loser in all of this? If, well, the it, people, goes, yeah. if it goes uh, the whole hog, like you've said. Well, the people. The people are the, uh, the biggest losers. I mean, in the... Uh, um, in the short um, uh, commentary that you provided at, at the beginning of the program, um, you, you, you did provide the statistics that about $700 or, or 700 pounds, each family in the U.S., a family of four in the U.S., will be, will be affected to the tune of $700 annually uh, as a result of this trade war. So the indi individuals, individual American, individual Chinese, would definitely uh, um, uh, suffer from it. But if we're going to compare between China and 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 the U.S., I, I think that is a good, it, it is clear that uh, China would um, um, would suffer greatly from from a trade dispute between both countries. China uh, exports more than more than 22 percent of its global exports to um, to the U.S., whereas the U.S. exports about just 8 percent. So there is more Chinese uh, dependence on American economy and okay. American. Uh, 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 um, economy than, than the other way around. So, All right. Uh, Gentlemen, I have to say thank you very much for joining me on The World Now. Kelechi uh, Deka is a policy analyst. Thank you so much for joining me on The World Now. And Dr. Bola uh, Dediron, uh, international relations expert.